as cool and as customizable as these Infinity Nissan cars can be. There's one problem that they all seem to suffer from. experiencing don't feel bad we've all dealt with rasp at one point or another in the past and I know some of you are experiencing it and dealing with it right now because I've had a bunch of questions pop up in just the last few days what the hell is this noise that I'm hearing how do I take care of it what's the problem rasp can rear its ugly head even in the most expensive of exhaust setups it's just the way it is it's the nature of this VQ Infinity Nissan uh, six cylinder beast. Rasp can manifest itself in a number of different ways as well. Some of the most commonly used descriptors. One term my dad used to use all the time was it sounds like pennies in a coffee can uh, rattling around. Other people have described it as similar uh, sounds as like a, a regular exhaust leak or loose gaskets between connections. A hollow tinny sound other people have talked about. Uh, like I said, it, it can rear its ugly head in a number of different ways and you'll be, if you're not thinking about rasp being the issue you could be chasing exhaust leaks for months like i did myself have no fear guys have no fear there is a resolution and i know what it is the f did they do to my road ah damn it you guys got to get yourself one of these custom steering wheels from jalisco's underscore carbon fiber on instagram check him out immediately if not sooner some visuals and explain just a little bit how we can handle this rasp situation and also uh, give you a little bit of insight into my setup and uh, how I was able to create a system that has little to no rasp whatsoever. And actually, I think it sounds pretty damn good. Rasp is such an unfortunate thing when we're dealing with these VQ engines specifically and um, you know I personally have dealt with it myself a couple other vehicles in the past uh, four bangers uh, have problems with rasp from time to time and uh, you saw my own personal vehicle included in that montage at the beginning of this video that actually was th with this mid pipe setup uh, now that current that setup on the dyno had test pipes and just these resonators, that was it. So that was the main reason for most of the rasp. There just was nothing to handle it. In order to fix or prevent rasp, I guess you really have to understand what rasp really is and what causes it. So we'll talk about that just for a second here. I'll draw you a little picture. Now, most people understand that sound travels in waves, right? So think of rasp essentially as some crazy sound waves that our ears don't like. Okay, so I have my Sharpie here. I'm gonna try to draw this out for you. So imagine this is your exhaust pipe, okay? And your engine's over here, so your exhaust flow is going like this. So remembering that 
uh, your the exhaust tones sound travels in waves the the exhaust notes wavelengths i guess you would say that we like are these nice flowing even exhaust notes or waves frequencies they're smooth they're even uh, they're deep and throaty it gives you that nice even smooth tone right so say we install test pipes we eliminate the factory catalytic converters which has that densely packed material the converter material it really opens up some of these kind of crazy erratic spiky tones uh, that are just all over the place they're sharp uh, they can be tinny sound rattly and that's what works its way out your tailpipes and gives you that crazy obnoxious tone that just hurts our ears uh, you obviously didn't have this crazy raspy tone before you installed your test pipes right that's because you have catalytic converters in line so um, let's again look at your uh, exhaust pipe uh, again your engine is over here exhaust is flowing this way but instead of the open test pipes you have your um, catalytic converter so we'll do this you know, it's densely packed kind of honeycomb material, and that's absorbing a lot of these, um, a lot of the exhaust notes and tones in general. That's why factory cars are very quiet, you know, very, sl not slow, but very, very long exhaust wavelengths, very long sound waves. Um, so it's relatively quiet. You don't hear much of anything. There's no rasp, there's no rattle, there's no drone. It's just all absorbed in this dense catalytic converter material. So a, a vast majority of the rasp uh, in volume is produced by eliminating this catalytic converter. So opening up your exhaust system allows for all of, all of this stuff to happen. Uh, but that's not to say that nothing else in your aftermarket exhaust system uh, doesn't lend to, to um, rasp either and I'll, I'll try to explain so if you have nice quality materials that have you know thick heavy uh, walls your exhaust pipes have nice heavy walls that helps to um, reduce vibration in your exhaust system so vibration in your exhaust system can lend to rasp as well so imagine something with really thin walls it's gonna reverberate or vibrate through that exhaust system as it works its way from front to back to your tailpipes that can cause drone it can cause rasp uh, you know it just makes it not sound good an example of that would be something like this an aftermarket y pipe um, or an x pipe you go to a, an exhaust shop that is going to make you a, a custom catback system and a lot of times they'll use something like this really thin wall material uh, this is a y uh, if they use an X, it's it's a pressed or um, uh, sort of two-piece unit. Um, so it's got a little piece of pipe here, a little piece of pipe here, a little piece of pipe here, and then it's pressed, stamped together with this outside shell. And essentially what it is, is an echo chamber. And this is a major source of rasp. And a lot of guys have that because they get uh, an aftermarket system that maybe isn't as high quality and they'll use something like this or they go to an exhaust shop and this is all they have available for an X or a Y pipe uh, just because they're pretty difficult to make so again there's a major source of rasp right there what's the solution right what do we do to get rid of rasp or what do we do to prevent rasp from starting in the first place well the key is resonators the proper resonator now you might say, well, you got resonators here. Why was that set up raspy? This is a setup, again, that was on the car on that dyno, uh, in the dyno video. Um, these resonators are quite small, maybe 10 inches in overall length. Uh, you know, the resonator itself is about 10 inches or so. That is not enough when you have an open VQ37. It just cannot handle it. Now, what does a resonator do? Now, a resonator is a beautiful thing for a couple of reasons. So here we go. We'll draw one up here. Here's your exhaust pipe again get an engine this way flow this way uh, your resonator is the so resonator one of the beautiful things is is that they are of a straight through design so exhaust flows freely through a resonator they it does not obstruct or restrict your flow whatsoever so it doesn't reduce power you're not going to reduce your power or performance by adding resonators great thing so what a resonator is is uh, 
basically a canister that has a perforated core running through it. So this is to represent those perforations, the holes, uh, which opens up or goes into these uh, the surrounding area, which is filled by this um, packing material, essentially like fiberglass or like a steel wool type material that absorbs sound frequencies. So it's still flowing this nice deep exhaust note that's going through your exhaust system. However, when these crazy, choppy, spiky, raspy notes are coming through, it's being absorbed into this material. So it weakens that raspy sound. You might still get some of it that gets through, but a lot of it is being absorbed here in the resonator. So this, you know, cylinder. So the larger diameter that the uh, resonator is, the more packing material that can be fit in there. Also the length of the resonator is going to make a major difference. The longer the resonator is, the more absorption power it's going to have over that, that raspy frequency that's making its way through the resonator. So overall diameter and length of resonator makes a huge difference in how good it is at handling rasp. So the reason that my system works so well is, some of you know that I have a mid muffler, a Borla Pro XS mid muffler, and it looks like this. So it essentially, it's called a muffler, but it essentially is just a crossover resonator. It's a resonator with a true crossover. So the flow is not restricted whatsoever. However, it is more substantial than your typical resonator because this core again is perforated just like the resonator I drew before. Uh, so those frequencies are absorbed in this packing material in all these different locations. And it's much more substantial than just a regular round resonator because it's an actual like muffler in shape. So it really absorbs a lot of these crazy frequencies uh, as it makes its way through the exhaust system. Sorry if you couldn't see. Um, not only that, it's a crossover. So your exhaust flow is crossing over each other, kind of evening out that tone as it makes it through the center portion. Now here's an example. This is not a dual in, dual out. It's a dual in, single out, but it's essentially uh, the same thing. It's much more substantial than that small resonator, as you can see. And I think even the Borla XS is slightly longer. So it's even larger than this. <laughs> if, I can, if I can hold it up. So you can see it's straight through and you can see the perforations in there. There's no restriction whatsoever. Air flows freely through there, but it is able to absorb a lot of that rasp just because of how substantial it is. In addition to that large Borla muffler that I have, I have dual Flowmaster Flow FlowFX resonators out the back and they are 19 inches in length and about four inches in overall diameter. So much more substantial than these small resonators here. So any of that raspy frequency that makes its way through the Borla muffler muffler uh, is absorbed in those massive uh, resonators out the back end. So essentially my system has no rasp whatsoever. There might be a time here or there where you can detect a little, especially now that those uh, resonators are, are worn in and burnt out and I've shot a couple of flames through. Them. Uh, but essentially the rasp is gone. So I'm very, very pleased with that setup. Um, but that is the key. Resonators is the key. Now there are some really nice high quality uh, systems out there on the market, but some of them still have a little bit of rasp and it's because they don't have, you know, the same substantial resonators uh, that I have in the system. The uh, Motordyme Shockwave, for example, is kind of a similar setup to this. It has the mid muffler uh, back to dual resonators, uh, but that mid muffler is still relatively small. So it, it absorbs some of that rasp, but it doesn't get rid of all of it. So if you look at any clips with the Motordyme uh, Shockwave, you'll see uh, that it's got just a touch of rasp in it, but uh, it's a little bit better than a lot of them that are out there. Um, there are some, oh, there's, a, there's a ton of stuff. There's a ton of stuff out there. So if you want a really uh, still aggressive, you know, deep throaty exhaust system that still has some pretty nice volume to it, but you don't like a lot of the rasp, just make sure you're looking at systems that have substantial resonators. If I say substantial resonator one more time, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Anyway, you, you really want uh, those long, 
large diameter resonators to tackle a lot of that rasp. And if you can get something with a mid muffler or at least uh, larger uh, resonators than these in that mid muffler portion or that the, uh, the mid pipe portion of your car, uh, that's gonna help tackle a lot of that rasp as well. So just a couple of things to take a look at or look out for as you're shopping exhaust systems for your VQ. Hopefully guys, this video was somewhat informative for you, but if you have any exhaust related questions, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know what I can help you with. I'm glad to assist in any way that I possibly can. Until then, thank you guys very much for the continued support. I really, really appreciate it more than you know. We're on the road to 5,000 subscribers and I can't wait to hit it in the next couple of weeks. So thank you again as always, and we'll see you in the next video.